worship today is a new year has begun. Let us leave behind all that is past and walk together into the future. Let us trust in the God of new beginnings and worship the God of fresh hopes. Amen. Welcome to this morning service of worship and communion on YouTube. A happy new year to you all and we hope that you were able to celebrate the beginning of this new year in ways that might have been unusual but hopefully meaningful. Let us come together to sing our first hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem. in our opening prayer. Glorious Lord, we, your sons and daughters, come together into your presence. We lift our eyes to you, seeking your guiding light and offering up our gifts of worship and praise. Father God, full of wisdom and power, whose arm stretches over all the earth, we adore you. Holy Saviour, full of grace, lighting up our world, we adore you. Spirit of the living God, full of the boundless grace and mercy available to us in Christ, we adore you. Lord, just as the wise men set out into new territory in search of you, help us to step out of life's narrow tramlines. 
Forgive us for seeking you out only in areas we know and in which we are comfortable. In their day, the wise men were outsiders, yet were guided by a star and spoken to in a dream, their steps directed for your purpose. Forgive us when we fail to see or even dismiss your leading from unexpected places and unlikely people. Lord, forgive us. Widen our vision and expand our minds to search and discern you in all places and people, that we may be drawn closer to you. Amen. Thank you to Kat, who will lead us in the first of many notices for the year. Good morning and a very warm welcome to everyone worshipping with us this morning. All our notices for the week are in contact and care. The book club is taking place via Zoom tomorrow evening. Please message Fiona for the joining details if you haven't already had them. I would like to highlight the Bible study being delivered by Andy Twilly, the Synod Training and Development Officer, which will explore the challenges of anti-racist living in the 21st century within our society. This two hour Bible study will be run on the 28th of January and then repeated on the 16th of February. Both sessions will take place via Zoom from 7 till 9 p.m. For, for more information, please visit the website and places for this training can be booked by contacting myself or using the email address on the website. Nadine is on leave next week. Please do not hesitate to contact Jill at Beckenham or Fiona, myself or your elder at Christchurch if you have any pastoral concerns. Birthdays this week. Mike has a birthday on Wednesday. We hope you have a lovely day. Thank you. David will read from the Hebrew Scriptures for us this morning. Thank you, David. The reading is from Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 to 6. The future glory of Jerusalem. Arise, Jerusalem, and shine like the sun. The glory of the Lord is shining on you. Other nations will be covered by darkness, but on you the light of the Lord will shine. The brightness of his presence will be with you. Nations will be drawn to your light, and kings to the dawning of your new day. Look around you and see what's happening. Your people are gathering to come home. Your sons will come from far away. Your daughters will be carried like children. You will see this and be filled with joy. You will tremble with excitement. The wealth of the nations will be brought to you. From across the sea their riches will come. Great caravans of camels will come from Midian and Ephah. They will come from Sheba, bringing gold and incense. People will tell the good news of what the Lord has done. Rachel will read for us the story of the wise men from Matthew's Gospel. Thank you, Rachel. The Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, and not the least amongst the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, bring back word to me, that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense and myrrh. Then... 
being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod. They departed for their own country another way. Thanks be to God. 2020 felt like we could most closely identify with the messiness of the nativity scene. The mass of people who had their worlds unsettled by the government issuing instructions in Mary and Joseph's time, it was the census in their hometowns. In our case, a life of lockdown and tear structures. The chaos of having a child far from home. In our case, having our home lives turned upside down. The humble venue, the stable, with all of its vulnerabilities. COVID has made us aware of the tenuous state of our world and highlighted how some are more susceptible than others and how unequal resources has played a part in every society during this pandemic and contributed to its trauma. So much of the messiness is still with us in 2021. Many uncertainties still exist as there is not a clear light at the end of the tunnel. No end date to the lockdowns, no sure date to the end of the threat of the virus, and no certainty that all countries will have fair access to the vaccines free of corruption and profiteering. So being in the stable with the Holy Family amidst the chaos of the birth scene mirrored our daily experience for most of 2020. 2021 does feel a little different though so far. All the shock of last year seems to be wearing off and a normalizing effect is beginning to settle in. We know the drill of life in lockdown. We know what months of this will mean. And we know with certainty that in order to keep new infection rates low, we need to be mindful of each other every day. So things are a little different already this year. This Sunday is normally the service where we induct elders who have chosen to come back into serving eldership after a sabbatical. And this year at Christ Church, we have three such elders, David, Peter, and Jackie, or where we ordain new elders. And so Rachel would have had her ordination today. We also welcome new people into membership. And so Margaret would have been making her commitment it is sad that we are not able to celebrate in our usual way today, but we have each of the elders helping us lead worship, and we look forward to a special service in the not so distant future. We also have the elders from both churches share in the sermon a little later on. It is always such a joyous service, and with it comes a renewal of our commitment to each other and our renewed determination to follow Jesus. So we will postpone the actual service, but the commitment and the determination we need not postpone for any of us. Today's reading talks about another set of people determined to meet Jesus, the wise men. They see a star in the sky and they know it to be significant and to be the star that will signal the birth of a king. They are intrigued, they're curious, they wonder what lay ahead if they followed the star, who would meet them at their destination. They are so enthralled by this prospect that they decide to follow it. They go on a journey, not 100% sure where it was leading, but willing to follow as the promise of a royal birth awaits them. They go on an adventure, all three of them together, but with the certainty that what they must do is follow that star, guiding them from up above. 2021, I suspect, will be such an uncertain adventure. We will journey it together as a church with people who are on this road with us from our physical churches, with those that worship on YouTube and those that call in and listen and fellowship on the phone on Zoom. We are all following Jesus and determined to not allow this pandemic to hold us back in our faith journey. We're following where God leads us, even though the path is not certain. We do not know where we are going, but we do know who is leading us. However, these magi act in a not so wise way and take their eye off the ball in the sky, if you will. 
They arrive following the star in Jerusalem and decide, oh, here we are at the site of the king. Let's go to the palace and meet the newborn king. To be fair, it was an obvious assumption, but the God who works in mysterious ways does not do the expected. And God works miracles, not in the ways of this world. So the wise men stepped wrong and lost their way a little. They did not trust that they were being led somewhere different. This can be easily done by all of us. One of the issues we plan to engage with this year is what it means to choose to live in an anti-racist way in this multicultural society and world. We want to examine through Bible study and discussion what are those unconscious biases that each of us has, those deep-rooted assumptions that often take us off track and lead us along the wrong path. We want to make sure that we are walking the path that God wants of us and not one that causes harm to anyone. So we'll begin this journey of self-examination and reflection through a two-hour Bible study, which is being hosted by our Synod's Training and Development Officer, Andy Twilley. Please, anyone who would like to be part of this journey, check out our website for details. You will be most welcome. But the Magi get back on track eventually when they are shown the error of their ways. They put aside their assumptions and again continue the adventure of following the star to their true destination, the birth of Jesus. They are confronted with the baby, the Messiah, in such an unassuming place, and they are humbled by the experience. They bring their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. What gifts will you be asked to bring to God in 2021? What significant and important gifts are you willing to lay at the feet of Jesus this year? Will it be an open heart willing to examine how you have grown up with assumptions that may not be accurate or true? Will it be embracing a new technology that will enable us to enter into new ways that we can learn about God? Will you offer your time, your money or your resources to help people affected by the pandemic. Today, as we have said, would have been a time to focus on the leaders, the elders of our churches that have been called to lead us as they follow and obey Jesus. So this morning, I have asked that they share with you a snippet of the dream and the plans that they have for Christchurch and Beckenham for 2021. My hope for 2021 for the church is to connect even further with our community both near and far in prayer, worship and fellowship. My dream, like most people I'm sure this year, is for us to be able to meet on a regular basis to worship God and to sing hymns within a congregation and to enjoy the fellowship afterwards with each other, which for us is so important as a church at Beckham. One of my hopes for Christchurch during 2021 is to consolidate and grow our congregation, building on the streaming and live streaming services we've begun as a result of the COVID constraints. I would like us all to be back together again in 2021. I miss every one of you. My hope for the church is that we might be as the wise men, bringing gifts, the franking sense of prayer in our heartfelt and fervent worship of the Lord our God the myrrh of sacrifice in our service to our community, however we can achieve it. 
the gold of fellowship and friendship in our love and care for each other. Finding a different way home, joyfully and obediently, after our journey through the pandemic. And the blessing of God on us all, as always. Amen. My dream for 2021 is that our digital community grows larger than it has in 2020. My hopes for church for 2021 are to cherish what we have, not what we've lost, to maybe have a hug and a cup of tea face to face. What would I wish for for Christchurch in 2021? Well, I'd obviously like us to maintain the amazing progress we've made in our virtual presence so that we can keep all those people who can't get to us physically so they can still see our services. And that means getting the audiovisual project completed and all those other exciting projects in the church finished. But most of all, I'd love to get back into church, whip off the face mask, sing songs, give each other a hug, have a cup of coffee and a chat, and most of all, perhaps get the children and their families back into church in a way that we haven't been able to do virtually. Happy New Year. Twenty twenty one. I pray for a year of calmness, a year of softness. A year of peace, a year of understanding. I pray that we continue to love and care for each other as we have done in this most difficult of years. 2020 has been a year of change. Let's use 2021 to embrace the opportunities that change has given us to be even better disciples. My hope for 2021 is that we can actually start using the survey that has taken so long to come into being. It's an amazing space and to be able to serve into the sanctuary will be just fabulous. Can't wait for this to happen. My wish for the church in 2021, I think particularly after the year that we've just had, is that we can be a place of hope and sanctuary for people who are feeling that everything has been a bit much. I think more than ever people need the support and love of Jesus and I hope that we can be a physical manifestation of that in our community um, and that people can, when we're allowed to worship back together, can enter our church and feel that they have found their home, much like we did when we first came to Christ Church when we moved here. May 2021 be an adventure that we are willing to journey with God wherever God leads us to stay the course and may we continue to be determined and committed to follow Jesus. Amen. Please join me for our second hymn, We Three Kings.
Let us share this communion meal together. Jesus, you invite us to your table freely without condition. We cannot earn a seat at your table and yet you have invited us here. We come together in our homes as we celebrate as the community of believers. Just as the grapes and the grains of wheat are transformed, we are also transformed by your grace and your love. Christ, you have brought us together in our homes into your extraordinary presence. We have no words with which to explain or to fully understand. And yet we are here with open hearts and open hands. As we work together to make this your world, your kingdom, we ask that you continue to transform us. A new year is upon us, a year full of your promise and possibilities. Help us to see ourselves in a new light and fill us with a desire for change. You taught us that God's creation is full of abundance to be shared with everyone. Encourage us to share your love and your gifts with those around us. We have come together at your invitation, once strangers, now family. According to Mark's Gospel, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with 12 of his disciples in an upstairs room in Jerusalem. The Gospel writer tells us what happened that night. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it. He gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and all of them drank from it. He said to them, this is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We offer you thanks, Creator saviour and giver of life. From the beginning you have made yourself known. The heavens proclaim your glory and the earth sings your praise. In wisdom you made all that is and you bless us with earth's fruitfulness. You are merciful and gracious and abounding in love. Yet from our first days we've disobeyed your will. Long ago you had called to yourself a people to shine as lights, to guide all nations to your presence. You led them to freedom. You re revealed to them your law and you taught them through your prophets. Finally, you sent your promised son, Jesus Christ, who shared our human nature and understood our weakness. Born of Mary, he showed forth your sign of love by word and deed. Therefore, with all your people in heaven and on earth, we sing the triumphant hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you that we can share in this special meal today. We have heard the good news of your love. The cross is the sign of your arms stretched out in love for us. And the empty tomb declares that your love is stronger than death. Christ has died. Christ is risen and Christ will come again. Let us pray together. Send your Holy Spirit upon this bread and wine and upon your people that Christ may be with us and we may be made ready to live for you and do what you ask of us today and every day. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the love of the Creator, one God, to whom be glory and praise forever. Amen. Today, the bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. The cup 
is the blessing of the communion of the body of Christ. And so I invite you all now to take a bit of bread and to eat it. That is the bread of life. I invite you to take a sip of your juice. That is the cup of blessing of new life. Let us pray together. God of a love stronger than death, you have given us a new birth into a living hope through the gift of your Son, God with us. Like a mother, you have fed us with yourself and you have strengthened us for the journey ahead. God of truth and power, you take our weakness and our sin and you refashion us by grace. Gracious God, may the love which bids us welcome at this table gather all your children into one in your eternal presence, whole and free at last. Amen. Jackie will now lead us in our intercessory prayers for others this morning. Thank you, Jackie. Dear loving Father, we exalt your holy name and praise you for your love and mercy. Merciful God, you are awesome. You are mighty and we glorify you for the enduring love you have for mankind. Dear Lord, in your infinite wisdom, you created man in your own image and likeness, but we've constantly failed and fallen short of your glory. Without your gentle love, tolerance and guidance, we will all be lost forever. Dear Lord, in your mercy, you sent your son, Emmanuel, God with us, to die on the cross to save mankind. Lord, after conquering death, you left a great part of you behind on earth, our comforter, counsellor and keeper, your Holy Spirit. May your Spirit continue to dwell within us. May your Spirit continue to dwell amongst us. May your Spirit lead us on the path of righteousness. May your Spirit guide us to see the wonder of your generosity as you did on the first Christmas day with the wise men. May your Holy Spirit lead us to the still quiet waters where we will find peace and calm after a stormy and chaotic year. Father, may your Spirit guide us with your light through the shadow of darkness, into the light of everlasting life, after the darkness of pain, grief, sadness of this year. Father, may your spirit counsel us and caution us when we stray from the path that leads to eternal life. May it shine bright over us as we maneuver our way back to you in the coming year. Thank you for your grace, mercy, and love. And as we continue to pray, we pray for our friends in Christ Church. We pray for Len. We pray for Pauline. We pray for Lorraine. We pray for Janet H. We pray for Sheila. We pray for Marion. And we pray for Gay. We pray also for Beckenham URC. We pray for David, we pray for Tish, we pray for Sheila, we pray for Pat, we pray for Mary, and we pray for Miriam. We also pray for all our friends at Sompton URC, and at Womburn URC, we pray for the Gibson family, and we pray for all those receiving treatment and those in poor health. Lord, hear us as we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is 
in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the, the power, power, and the glory. Forever and ever. And ever. 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 And ever. ever. And ever. And forever. And ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn is Thou didst leave thy throne. Please join together. Lord, as we continue our journey with you this week, as we seek to live out our faith every day, be with us, surprise with your love, nudge us when you want us to see or do something new. For Christ's sake, amen. And I invite you to say the grace along with me. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.